warm en zo, weet je. Maar dat kan zomaar omslaan. Dus we hebben de veiligheid gekozen van het Williams Motorhome. Ik ben bijzonder trots dat hij naast me zit, Sir Frank Williams. A very warm welcome on behalf of everybody in Holland. Thanks very kind, thank you. Thank you for making some time for us. Um, all right, let's open the door straight away. It's not the best of seasons for the Williams team, to be honest. It's probably one of our worst. Well, <laughs> but um, we go back a long way, a long history. We've been, we've been in this sort of predicament before, but we always punch our way out of it. And that's what we're doing now. Is that typical Formula One, where you see teams go on the high, then they take a slope. You, know, you never know how deep the slope's going to be. Ferrari said a 20 years, uh, a 20 year low, and then they came back. Uh, McLaren has had their fair share of success. You've been there together with Patrick. Well, when you said Ferrari 20 year low, well, I hope that doesn't apply to us. No. But yes, they do go up and down quite a bit. It's the nature of sport, the nature of team sport. And um, we have to change the cycle. You've worked with well, as far as I know, with Patrick for ages, it's, it feels like ages, a very long time. How important is he still for you, the team, the team members, everybody? Because if, if I look at Patrick, he always has this, he, he's, got, he's got this nice face, but he's, he also has this huge fighting spirit. He's a very powerful character, very clever, and he's a core feature of whatever we do. Back at the factory, he's a great engineer. He's brought on a lot of good younger engineers and he's delegated some of his responsibilities to one man in particular called Sam Michael. But Patrick takes a strong and particular overview of all the engineering that takes place and development that takes place concerning our cars. I've heard stories that usually Patrick on the Tuesday after a Grand Prix, he calls everybody from the factory together and explains the, the good things and the bad things about a weekend. Is that the truth? Uh, it's done on Mondays most of the time. Mainly Sam Michael does it now, but uh, that Patrick used to do that for 25, 30 years, yeah. Because that is, people tend to forget it, everybody in the factory, the guy who has to pay the little bills for the screw, for everything, because otherwise y you can't race. No, that, uh, communication's essential yeah. in any company, and um, our form of co communication within is fairly simple, very straight in your face, as we say in English, but it's effective. I took us for just a sec. Um, so now we're back. Then with more questions to Sir Frank Williams, and under other how it moet gaan in the future as he van motor gaat veranderen. Graag tot zo. We zitten er nog steeds, um, and I'm going further. Um, Sir Frank, next year, an engine change. Well, we've had engine changes over the years. We've, this year we have engine changes during weekends, which is not that good. But you, yeah, you, you're going to leave. BMW or BMW's, what's the situation? Have you left BMW or have they left you? Oh, to be very frank, they have left us to buy their own team. Um, going to Cosworth, a company, I think the most successful company ever in V8s. Was that one of the, did that help? There, were, there was another engine available to us for this year. It was a little more expensive than the Cosworth, but we were aware of the power development of both engines. And what has been generally overlooked is that, or unknown, is that Cosworth have been developing their V8 for 2006 for some 18 months, long before the regulation became signed off. So they've got a, they've got a good advantage in development terms already. You still enjoy Formula One as much as 10 years ago, or 15 years ago, or 20 years ago? Yeah, I enjoy every bit as much as ever. Obviously, it gets me out of bed in the morning. And I, I just enjoy that very involved in it and has, has been a privilege to participate. And how's Frank Williams himself doing? Eh? Everybody everybody knows um, you, you're disabled. Uh, it's been that for a long time. Are you okay? Do you, do you, I mean, it's, I've talked to you once before and I, I sort of, I, I still find it incredible that you still run the company and you also, like, like, like Petro has in, in your eyes, you, you know, I mean, if I tell something about Formula One, that's how it is. And, well, I enjoy, I repeat, I enjoy Formula 1 very much. It provides me with a lot of motivation. My health is good. No reason why that should change. I get really old, like everybody else, but um, I'm very happy. Thank you very much. Family-wise? Kids? They're all grown up, sadly. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're, we're around each other all of the time. What is the near future um, going to bring us in Formula 1? Is this change going to the V8? Is that a change for the better? A change for the costs? Or maybe a change for the worse? Where's the change? The, en the yeah, yeah, engine change? 
Well, the engines will, I think, cost marginally less, certainly not costing more. And they must last, as they do already, mind you, two, two races. It's a new technical challenge for the manufacturers. Whether it uh, will save any money long term remains to be seen. But it's a change, and Formula One always needs change. Talking about changes, we had changes last year with drivers coming left and forth and center and whatever. Um, the, way I, the way I look at the Williams teams and the way I look at you, I think you are at least one of the most straightforwardest teams in the paddock. Is it, is it difficult to be in a fight with a driver to get him in your car? You're talking about Jensen Button. It's not an enjoyable experience. I can't predict the eventual outcome. Uh, we certainly want Jensen. He's an outstanding driver. You brought him? Well, that was just for one year. He's still been two years at Renault. And I think three years now at BARC. He feels more at home there than anywhere else just now. Let's see what happens before I make any sensible comment. No, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to pull to pull comment out there, but, but, but knowing, the, uh, looking the way you've done your things, it, it, it mustn't be easy to, to, to end up in a fight to get an employee, because that's, in a way, your driver is, yeah, a driver is a driver, but also an employee. Well, sometimes the fight's at arm's length, and, you know, long distance, but both sides are very calm and have grown up about it. If everybody would be free, all the drivers, if all the drivers would be free, all of them, no contracts, no nothing, no... What would, what would be your dream team? Well, I think everyone would say the same, Kimi Raikkonen and Ferdinand Alonso are the same team. You get kind of big-headed if you had that, mind you. You might become an unpleasant individual. <laughs> do, you, do you sometimes have, have the idea that you, that you sort of missed out on recognizing them in the early stages? Are you now looking more towards those younger guys, or do you say, no, eventually I have to make a good car, then they'll come to me? Because, in a way, that's also how you think about it. The contractor's title for you is more important than the driver's title, I guess. It's generally apparent who's coming along. I must say, I didn't see Kimi Raikkonen coming along. That was a mistake. But there's always a limit to how many young drivers at any one time you can have, you can have in your house. And we had well, Jensen at that time under contract, and Juan Pablo as well. We missed out on Kimi. Uh, Peter Sauber clearly did a great job um, taking a chance. And, and I followed... Um, Flavio's in, Flavio Briatore of Renault's interest in Fernando for six years has been a brilliant manoeuvre. He, he's manoeuvred, manipulated in a nice way. Uh, Alonso for a long, really brought him through the ranks. Very clever. Do you, do you also look at the GPT races, GP2 races? I look at the GP2 races and I see young guns and I see guys making huge mistakes and fantastic overtaking and, and stuff like that. Uh, do you think GP2 is a very good successor to Formula 3000? I think you find many Formula 1 people, and certainly myself, whatever we're doing on Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning, we interrupt it because it's a must. Yeah. It's very exciting. It's always embarrassingly too exciting for us. Sometimes, honestly, sometimes it is. Um, for the rest of the season, um, we still have a couple of races to go. One, what we call the flyaway races. Is there still somewhere you, where you can say, okay, if we achieve that, then at least the season, we can say, okay, at least we've shown what we're worth of, because there's so much knowledge. There must be so much knowledge at Williams Grand Prix. So you still have to get, have to do something somewhere, in my opinion. But I'm only a journalist. <laughs> well, we are quite a long way behind, more than we were behind this time last year when we won the last yeah. race in Brazil. But um, I think I'd be too optimistic to say this is still possible. And certainly, as in most cases with other teams, our focus now is more and more on next year's car. Thank you very much. Um, I hope Spa will be good for you. Spa is always difficult. Then, then there's sunshine, then there's rain. It's a wonderful circuit.